Hello friends, my name is Volantis, and I had one burning question on my mind. Something even the greatest philosophers of all time couldn't even answer. Is it possible to kill over a thousand enemies in Resident Evil 4? Just how many can you kill? Today we find out, boys and girls. Some of you may have already tried this on your own, but don't spoil your results for the other gamers in the audience, okay? Let's just have fun. So there was one caveat to this playthrough. Before I started, I was pretty sure there were exploits to spawn infinite enemies somewhere in the game, but I didn't want to play that way. So like the smarty pants I am, I hopped on the old Google machine and did a little research. And as it turns out, there are supposedly two places in the game that spawn infinite enemies. The gallery room in chapter 3-2, and during the Salazar fight in chapter 4-4. Apparently if you kill some enemies in the gallery, leave and re-enter, all the enemies respawn, as long as you didn't kill the red-robed goat boy. And in the Salazar fight, the spider things on the lower level infinitely respawn. I'm assuming it's because they want you to have a way of accessing ammo for the boss fight, because you can't exactly knife him to death as a last resort. But anyway, I won't be exploiting these situations. I'm allowed to kill all enemies the first time, but I can't re-enter for the sole purpose of killing the same enemies more than once. For the spiders, I'm allowed to kill the first two, but no more than that. However, there are areas where new enemies spawn if you re-enter them, so I'll be rechecking a lot of rooms for enemies I've missed, and I'll address those areas as I go, as well as areas that seemingly have unending enemies. Also, some of you may be wondering, Oh, what about birds and snakes? Wouldn't it be easy to get a bunch of kills that way? Well yeah, they're easy to kill, but birds and snakes don't count towards your kill counter. There's also a set number of each of them anyway, but you'll probably see me kill a bunch along the way, and I wanted to clarify that. Alright, one last thing before we start. This isn't necessarily intended to be a challenge run. Yes, I am trying to kill as many enemies as possible, but I'm not restricting myself to the resources of a new save file. I want to have fun and rambo my way through this just for the hell of it, so I'll be using a combination of the Chicago typewriter and infinite launcher that I unlocked on a previous file. The whole point of the challenge is to see how many enemies can be killed. And with the game's adaptive difficulty, it'll send more enemies after you if it thinks it's too easy for you. So I'm using every advantage I can to spawn and kill as many enemies as possible. Besides, I'm sure it's just as doable with a new game and standard weapons anyway if you're good enough. I just don't feel like messing with that. Get off my back! The Chicago typewriter will also help with areas like the opening village fight and the cabin fight, since both of those are timed or end once you've killed enough enemies, and I'd rather kill as many as possible. And who knows, you might learn a new trick or two along the way. So after waiting for Julio to finish exposing himself to the forest, we arrive at the first house in the village. Leon, like a true American, just waltzes on in like he owns the place. But the man inside didn't take too kindly to him playing Christopher Columbus and tries to chop his freaking head off. So we take the role playing up a notch and kill him in his own home and then take what isn't ours. After narrowly escaping death, we rescue Moon Moon and make our way to the center of the village. I wanted to get the drop on these noobs, so I used a rocket launcher before they could see me. And I managed to barbecue cow and chicken in the process. Guys, what is that? Oh shit, Leatherface is on the loose and he wants to avenge his livestock! I put a couple dozen of them down and took out my rocket launcher to try and finish colonizing the village, but the church bell rang just in time for game night. Where's everyone going? Bingo? I looted the village, even though I clearly didn't need it, and made my way through the farm and toward the east side of the village. By the way, after the pee pee poo poos try to squish you with the boulder, if you turn around and look up, there are two enemies on the bridge above you. They can easily be ignored since you don't come back through this way, but it's two kills I can add to my counter, and I need all I can get. We go through the tunnel, annihilate the remaining enemies in the houses, meet Luis and El Gran Queso, and Chapter 1-1 comes to a close with a total kill count of 41. The remainder of Chapter 1 doesn't need much explaining. We wake up, meet the merchant, endure our second gauntlet of enemies so far, shoot him, shoot him, kill everybody on the screen, don't let anybody live, shoot some fishies, and have another run-in with El Gran Queso. He choked Leon so hard, blood almost shot out of his eyes. But like the big poo brain he is, he let us go. To show him thanks for not killing me, you should click the like button. Every like helps out the video and helps the channel grow, so click it if you're enjoying it. After that, we killed Sawman 2 and returned to the village center. It was here that I had to start backtracking to check for extra enemies. I walked all the way back to the first house, then through the farm and into the house Lewis was trapped in. I didn't find any extra enemies, so I continued on. We made it through the church, through the graveyard and killed Lakey Snakey, bringing all of chapter 1 to a close. I got 55 kills in chapter 1-2 and 54 kills in 1-3, bringing my overall kill count to 150. We wake up from our second nap of the day and it's time for more backtracking boys and girls. This one in particular was pretty ingenious on my part if I do say so. I'd never gone back the way I came from this point. 
The game requires you to progress to the next area to get the key to the church, so I never bothered going back the other way. But I figured surely some new enemies would show up, and I was right. After reaching the other side of the lake, I fought four wormy boys and a bunch more ganados. It honestly made me feel kind of small brain not knowing more enemies spawn here, but whatever, I need the kills. We get the key from under the waterfall and start heading back to the church. But before we can get there and confess our sins, we get stopped by the thickest of boys, the giant. I had no idea how I was going to beat him. But I picked myself up by my bootstraps and gave it a shot. By the way, yes, I am calling some things by the English or Spanish translations instead of what the game calls them, because I'm a silly boy. Anyway, we get back to the church, kill a couple more wormy boys, and rescue our baggage- uh, I mean the president's daughter. Chapter 2-1 ends with the total kill count of 195. So this next chapter is easy as heck. Since I backtracked to the village and the farm before rescuing Ashley, those areas were completely devoid of enemies after I saved her. So the only dum-dums I had to deal with were the ones in the graveyard. The bridge back to the lake was also destroyed, so I didn't have to worry about checking there either. When I got to the cabin, I decided to try a new tactic. Instead of blocking the windows with the bookshelves, I busted open those motherfuckers for the brainless goons to try and chow on my fleshy bits, and I just put a thousand rounds of molten hot lead and gunpowder into their lifeless skulls. Pump their motherfucking ass full of lead! I beat this chapter in record time, under 10 minutes, with a kill score 49. So chapter 2-3 is the one with the split paths. You can fight either Giant Number 2, or a gauntlet of Ganados including two Chainsaw Sisters. It was a tough decision, but in the end, I did both paths because I'm a man! Woo! I forced by the Giant a rocket, and went Rambo Commando on the Horde of Brainless Tards. In the process of getting through the camp though, Ashley mistook me for a misogynistic pig. Ow! You pervert! Pretty rude if you ask me, I'm just trying to save your life. I don't disrespect women like that. Stupid banana raincoat wearing bitch. Okay, fun fact. For anyone that didn't already know this, you have to do both paths if you want to collect all the treasure in the game. Each path has a different colored gem for the elegant mask, and there aren't extras if you want to max out the two masks in the game. Not that literally any of that matters for this playthrough, but I did say I'd show you a few tips along the way. Fun fact number two. The ganados that show up at the end of the camp are not infinite. I know here it looks like they spawn forever, but they do end if you just stand your ground and not be a puss. I imagine some people will just run by them to save ammo since you've already unlocked the way out, but they do end eventually. And yes, I know I have infinite ammo in this weapon, so you might be wondering why I use the knife on the barrels. Well, I wouldn't want my knife skills to get rusty. My knife? To get rusty? Alright, well all the pieces are there, somebody make something out of that. So the fight with the village chief was surprisingly not the most noteworthy part of this chapter. I put him down with a rocket and a few bullets. Easy peasy, no big deasy. The last part of the village section is this path leading to the castle. And there's something cool here as well I bet some of you didn't know. The dum-dums that come from the door behind you won't actually spawn in until you walk past the truck with your back to the door. The number that spawn is also a set amount, so you don't have to run away like the game makes you think. I easily took them all out and finished chapter 2 with 62 more kills, giving me a total of 306. So now we start the castle portion of the game. I was doing good until the scythe guy did a sneaky and sliced me in half like a tuna sandwich. He couldn't finish the job though because I lit him up like a Christmas tree. Merry Christmas, motherfucker. After that, Lewis tries to be my wingman. You stay here with Leon. No thanks, bro. And then it's on to the fight with Gary. His name is actually the Garador, but I don't feel like saying that every time, so he's just gonna be Gary. Ready for another fun fact? I just learned about this in this playthrough. There's ammo on the beam above Gary's room. You just shoot it down. I was getting my old Christopher Columbus urges again and bust down Gary's door, but he wasn't too happy about it. I'll hunt you down and gut you like a fish! And gut me like a fish he did. But he couldn't handle a hundred rounds of red hot masculinity and he went down like panties on prom night. Just like with the village chief in the last chapter, the water room was the least noteworthy part. I easily killed them all and finished chapter 3-1 with 89 kills. Next is the sewer part with the Novisadors. You know the bug things. This part becomes pretty easy once you know how to bait them. On top of the music cue, you can also see their breath so they aren't too hard to spot. 
I finished the sewer and was back in the main hall with the cultists. I surprised the idiot babies with my launcher and got an easy chunk of kills. Man, committing mass murder is no sweat for Leon. I backtracked through the water room into the castle exterior but found no enemies. So here we are finally at the gallery room. Or the room just before the gallery? I don't know, who cares. This is the fight I mentioned at the start of the video. Supposedly if you kill enemies but leave the red robed goat boy alone, leave and come back, the other enemies will respawn. I didn't test this however, I manned up and took them all on first try. Something odd happened with goat boy though. It took two rockets to kill him. I thought maybe I just didn't hit close enough to him with the first one. But no! Look at this! I exploded that mother right in the face! I guess he's just a glutton for punishment. I got him with the second one just in time because frig this fight if he uses the turret. No thank you. The next room also had some zany antics with the rocket launcher. This room has the rocket twins. They aren't difficult to dodge, but trying to kill them is another story. I failed to kill them with my own rocket, but as fate would have it, they killed themselves instead! All right. Let us all take a moment of silence for the brave sacrifice these two made in the name of a low-budget YouTube video.